Imagine a creature larger than any skyscraper living undisturbed beneath the ocean's surface for thousands of years. As we delve deeper into the ocean's mysteries, we uncover new fascinating species, hinting at the vast, unexplored territories still hidden from us. Scientists have a term for this phenomenon, deep sea gigantism, where creatures grow to colossal sizes in the ocean's depths. So the existence of a colossal creature, while improbable, isn't entirely out of the realm of possibility. But how does a creature of this size go unnoticed for so long and what could possibly awaken it? Let's delve into that mystery. Theories abound, with seismic activity often at the forefront. Imagine an undersea earthquake not uncommon causing massive shifts in the ocean floor. This could certainly disturb any dormant creature, even one as colossal as clover. Then there's human activity to consider. Deep sea drilling, for instance. We're constantly probing the ocean's depths for resources, causing significant disruption to the marine environment. The noise, the vibration, the invasion of space, all of these could potentially stir a sleeping giant from its slumber. And let's not forget about deep sea mining. This practice can create plumes of sediment that suffocate marine life and disturb delicate ecosystems. The impact on the ocean's inhabitants is profound and far-reaching. Human activities are known to disturb and displace marine life, making the awakening of a deep-sea giant like Clover feasible. Now let's talk about the most dramatic part, the attack on New York City. Picture this. A colossal creature uprooted from its natural habitat finds itself amidst the towering skyscrapers and bustling crowds of an alien environment. How would it react? Most likely with fear, confusion, and a primal instinct to protect itself. This notion isn't as far from reality as you might think. In the wild, animals often react with aggression when they feel threatened or displaced. Take the African elephant, for example. When they wander into human settlements, their confusion and fear can lead to tragic conflicts. Or consider the grizzly bear, a creature that fiercely protects its territory. If a human unknowingly encroaches on its domain, the bear's instinctive response can be deadly. So, our gargantuan sea monster, plucked from the depths of the ocean and dropped into the heart of New York City, could very well react in a similar manner. Its attack on the city doesn't necessarily stem from malevolence, but rather, a primal instinct to survive. The buildings it topples, the chaos it instigates, are all consequential to its fear and confusion. To our sea monster, New York City is an unfamiliar and hostile territory, filled with strange creatures and structures. Its destructive rampage can be seen as a desperate attempt to regain control, to re-establish a sense of safety amidst the pandemonium. While a full-scale assault by a sea monster seems far-fetched, animal behavior in times of stress or threat can be unpredictable and destructive. The government's response in the movie was immediate and military-focused, but how would it pan out in reality? In an actual situation, the government would first implement disaster response plans, which are designed for a variety of emergencies, from natural disasters to terrorist attacks. These plans include evacuation procedures, medical aid, and communication strategies. Yet, a giant monster attack? That's not something we're typically prepared for. The military would likely be called into action. Tanks, jets, missiles, we've seen this in countless sci-fi flicks. But how effective would they be against an enormous unknown entity? That's a question mark. And then, there's the human element. Panic and chaos would likely ensue as people try to make sense of the inexplicable. Social order could break down, leading to looting, violence, and further destruction. Given the unforeseen nature of such an event, the government's response could indeed be chaotic and destructive, as depicted in the movie. So could the events of Cloverfield actually happen? It's a bold question, but let's revisit the points we've touched on. We've talked about the potential existence of a deep-sea creature, something not entirely out of the realm of possibility given the ocean's vast and largely unexplored depths. We've discussed how human activities could potentially awaken such a beast, with our incessant probing and pollution of the ocean's depths. Then there's the ensuing attack on the city, a horrifying scenario, but one that mirrors the destruction we've seen in natural disasters. Lastly, we discuss the government's response, their attempts to control, contain, and eliminate the threat, a reaction we've seen in real-world crisis situations. So, while the monster may be a work of fiction, the underlying themes of Cloverfield human interference with nature, disaster response, and the unforeseen consequences of our actions are all too real. 
While Cloverfield is undoubtedly a work of science fiction, elements of its story are rooted in reality, making it a thrilling exploration of what-if scenarios.